So in this episode of TechSess, we're going to find out what happens to David's business as he attempts to fix his email hijack problem and get his business back on track. Welcome to TechSess, the show about helping you to get the right technology and cybersecurity in place to enable your business to be more safe and successful. I'm your host, Mark Riddell, Managing Director of M3 Networks. Over 140 businesses across the UK use us to put an end to staff complaints about frustrating IT problems. It's sometimes impossible to pinpoint the exact entry point into your email system. The new voice on the phone explained to David. So our focus after a breach is a broad series of best practice security measures to ensure it won't happen again. We have a robust checklist of things we will do to kick your hackers out and prevent them from getting in again. He continued. There are no 100% guarantees of cybersecurity as it's such a fast moving world. But what we're going to do for you will make your business dramatically harder to break into in the future. Hackers like low hanging fruit. Your business will be much higher up the tree. David felt his body relaxing for the first time in 24 hours. He'd had a terrible night's sleep, getting home late and waking covered in sweat at 4am. Since he'd discovered the theft yesterday morning, it had consumed every moment of his attention. He got a lot of it sorted out, including placating the staff and apologising to his ops manager. He'd also decided to hire a new IT support company. They were a lot more focused on cyber security than his previous company, and he believed them when they said cybercrime was the number one threat to businesses like his. Pity the hundreds of holiday emails were still waiting, and now the staff were going to have to suffer a load of disruption as the business's security was locked down. The new IT company immediately logged everyone out of their business email accounts and forced everyone to change their password. There were a few grumbles, but the team could see why it needed to happen. They also had multi-factor authentication set up, It's just like when you log into your bank account, David explained to his staff. You use an app on your phone to confirm the login and prove it really is you. Our new IT company tells us it's a minor disruption, but immediately stops us from being an easy hack in the future. The firm's technicians investigated the email trail that had led to the hack and quickly discovered an unauthorised email forwarder. Cleverly, the hackers had set it so it couldn't be discovered in normal Outlook email, only in Outlook web access where you get your emails through a browser. That explained why David's old IT support company had never found it. They deleted the email forwarder, reported the email address, and then set up a scanner so they'd be notified if an email forwarder was ever set up again. They also set up a full audit trail within Office 365 to help diagnose any future hacking attempts. And they reported the dodgy domain name where the hackers were pretending to be David's supplier. This flurry of activity seemed enough to David, But the reassuring voice on the phone said there were other areas they really should address. The goal was to put together a layered security option to offer you the right balance of security, he explained. We never want you and your staff to have to go through this again, but at the same time, we don't want to create too much adverse disruption to the way you work every day. David listened intently. Studies have shown that too much security can have an adverse effect on staff attitudes towards it, the technician continued. They will soon forget the pain of this hack, If they see the ongoing extra security as an annoyance that's holding them back, they will not take it seriously. And that could leave you even more exposed than you were before. So together, we're going to find the right balance of security and education for your business. David scribbled notes in his pad as the technician laid out the many different options available to him. Even at this early stage, he could see some could work well for his staff and others were impractical. It made him feel relaxed that he had an expert on his side helping him get this sorted out properly. Now, if every business used every possible layer of email security out there, they'd reduce their chances of being hacked down to just 1 or 2% probably. But they'd also struggle to do business every day because there are plenty of tools available to protect companies of every size. But the trick, as the technician just explained to David, is putting together the right blend to suit your business so you're protected but your hands are not tied. Now, in the actual book of Email Hijack, we talk about the 10 layers of email security and this is not an exhaustive list by all means, but certainly is a start point of best practice that can help the average business out there to help ensure that their email system is as secure as it can be. So if you want to find out what that advice is and what these 10 layers of email security are, then head over to m3networks.co.uk 
forward slash email hijack and you'll be able to request a free copy of the book. It's a physical, actual book that's printed that we will send out in the post for you for absolutely no money whatsoever. You just have to fill in your details. Obviously, we need your address or your business address we can send this out to because it's an actual thing we have to stick in the post. It's not a PDF. So if you want to get your hands on that, that web address again is m3networks.co.uk forward slash email hijack. But first up, I just want to tell you a little bit about the IT services buyer's guide that we have. This is a free document on our website. You don't have to enter any information to get access to it. You just need to head over to www.m3networks.co.uk forward slash buyer's guide and you'll be able to click the link and get the download. And this is going to give you loads of information to help you understand the questions that you need to ask any potential IT partner in your business, or indeed just go back and ask these questions to your existing IT company, and then you can help find out whether you're being served correctly and whether there's any gaps in the IT support services that you are being offered. Now, let's get back to the episode. So we're going to find out what happens to David's business in the final chapter of the book called The Future. David laughed at the joke and took a bite of his food. He always enjoyed the company of this particular group of friends as they were business owners too, just like him. Their partners and children had grouped together and gone off to do their own thing, so the conversation soon turned to business. After the usual bravado of everyone claiming business was great, they started swapping horror stories. A member of staff who really should be fired. A major customer service failing. An idiot client. And David couldn't help but chip in with his hack story from a few weeks before, told in great detail with all the embellishments, the discovery, the hassle, the fix, and how, just a few weeks later, his cash flow was starting to recover and he knew his business would be fine. He had a rapt audience. They jumped in with a load of questions for him. And as he listened to them discussing the situation, he remembered something his new IT technician had told him on the phone. For far too many businesses, email security isn't an issue until it suddenly is. David knew that this had been the case with his business. Now it was protected and kept up to date. He'd read stuff over the years about cybersecurity, but had assumed hackers wouldn't be interested in a business like his. Now he knew that assumption was completely wrong. Business owners and managers were so busy all the time that they had to filter out a lot of the noise. He realised cybersecurity was suddenly much higher up the agenda for this group of friends because someone they knew had been attacked and compromised. In the same way that people buy burglar alarms when a friend has been burgled, and more insurance when someone they know well gets a serious illness. If that was the one good thing that came out of this expensive, difficult lesson, then David could live with that. He swigged his beer and smiled. Who do you know who'll be compromised next? Now, as I said earlier on, while this is a fictitious story, the situation David found himself in is no longer rare. Now, I'm not scaremongering here when I say someone that you know will be compromised at some point in the next 12 to 18 months. Now, you might not know about it because business owners and managers don't like to run around telling everyone they've been hacked. Understandably, they're reluctant for clients and peers to find out. It's usually quite an embarrassing situation. Which is a pity because I wish more business owners would tell their friends what happened. Not because IT security and support businesses like mine enjoy cleaning up mess afterwards. Far from it, in fact. We just prefer to do the preventative work to stop it from happening in the first place. It's easier for you to make decisions about the blend of security for your business when you're doing it by choice rather than in a hurry as a matter of necessity. It's also a lot less expensive and there's considerably less hassle for you and your team. If your business isn't yet fully protected with the correct layers of security for your specific situation, my team here at M3 would love to help you. More and more owners and managers are waking up to the risks and putting in appropriate preventative measures before they get hacked. So if you'd like to get in touch with me and arrange a free chat about your cybersecurity and how we can maybe help with that, if you head over to m3networks.co.uk forward slash meetmark, you'll be able to see my calendar and you can book a free 15 minute consultation call at a time that suits you. If you'd like a quick chat with me about anything I've discussed in this episode, or you have a specific question about any aspect of your IT or cybersecurity, you can book a call in my diary. Just head over to www.m3networks.co.uk forward slash meet Mark.
And finally, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to follow or subscribe to the podcast in your favorite podcast app for future episodes where I'll dive deeper into other IT and cyber related topics. Texas is an M3 Networks podcast. Find out more at m3networks.co.uk.